Hey folks, it's David Frost, MyStrategicForecast.com. You're looking at a chart of the S&P 500 or SPY. This is the spider chart. It's the daily chart. And if you remember yesterday, um, I mentioned that if we closed below the low from yesterday, uh, that was going to be a bearish sign. Well, that happened, obviously. We finally had a pickup in volume. And this was the first day in quite a while that we had a decent volume day. And it was on a down day, of course. So the market floats up on light volume and we go down on, on heavy volume. So it's the escalator up and the elevator down as usual. So, um, so what's in store next? Well, uh, basically, I still say that this uh, pivot low here from the 28th of April is going to be defended. It's about 185, let's call it. So 184 and a half, 185, maybe this gap gets filled here at uh, 184.33. So somewhere in the 184 to 185 range is the target. Now, if we breach that with any kind of significant volume or conviction, uh, I think we're going to take a run at the 200-day moving average. I'm not sure that we'll stay here in this area here, which was the low last time around at 181 and change. Um, but we'll take it one day at a time, and uh, let's not get ahead of ourselves. So right here, 184 to 185. And, um, you know, I still, I still hold my thought process that the market's going to somewhat hold up for the next month or so. And if that holds true, um, you know, we're looking at the latter part of June for any kind of significant sell-off. So, you know, we'll know shortly here by, uh, I would say, being that now we're back into a downtrend, I would say by next Tuesday or Wednesday at the latest, we should hit this, this level down here, 184, 185, um, unless we reverse up. Don't forget, this week is options expiration. Anything goes tomorrow. I wouldn't even begin to figure out what's going to happen tomorrow. Uh, you know, when we wake up in the morning, the futures are going to be up or down. And who knows what the day has in store. Options expiration, weird, weird things happen. So we'll just take it one day at a time and let the uh, let the technicals tell us what to do. And that's what we're doing now. We're, we're just getting a feel for what's going to happen. And if we, if we kind of bounce around here and come down here in light volume or we get a reversal in here, then uh, I'm going to have more conviction that my uh, theory on uh, – uh, the latter part of June for a real heavy sell-off is going to hold true. Um, let's take a look at, um, I put out a trade alert before for the TLT short. So I just want to take a look at the um, the actual, the 10-year uh, bond or the 10-year interest rate. And um, what we're looking at here is a real good sell-off in the 10-year. And most interest rates are benchmarked off the 10-year. And the TLT that we went short is actually not in the 10-year. It's actually the 20, 30-year bond. But I like to look at the 10-year for um, uh, because most traders trade off the 10-year note. So most interest rates trade together uh, with little divergence. So here we go, the 10-year. Um, where is the bottom here? And let, let me go in a little more depth. You can go on the video and see the philosophy and the whole technicals behind the TLT trade. But let's look at interest rates. And I just want to show you something here on a daily chart. This looks fairly ugly. It looks like it's a falling knife. We don't want to catch a falling knife. And what do we have when we go out a little bit to the weekly chart? Well, we see that we're coming into a 200 period moving average. And where is that? Right now, it's about 240. So whether we go down to 240, 235 in that neighborhood, I'm not sure. But I think that you'll get a bounce along here. I think this will be defended somewhat. And then let's look. And by the way, this is a bullish pattern, right? You have an up move, and then you're consolidating sideways really for uh, the better part of a year, um, almost a year at this point. Well, it's about a year. So Let's look at the uh, monthly chart and we'll go one step farther and we'll say here we have a low, we have a higher low, we have an up move, we have some sideways consolidation. You know, whether this goes on for uh, another few months or whatnot, 
I'm not sure, but you know what? When this is finished and ready, you're going to blast off to the upside. So, you know, these are, I'm not saying we're going to get a blast off to the upside next week. I'm just saying that the market's not as bearish as the media, I guess, would like you to believe in terms of interest rates. So, um, you know, we, we, they've been calling for higher interest rates for a long time, but they're going to come. Uh, it's just a matter of time. So anyway, you go look at the uh, video for the TLT trade and you'll see more in depth on that. Right now, let's swing over to the gold market and uh, take a look at the, no, that's not the gold market. Let's take a look at the, the GLD. GLD came down a little bit today. That's the monthly. GLD came down a little bit today. Here's the daily. Um, again, there's nothing good here. Every time it tries to, to move an up, uh, have an up move, uh, it gets shot back down. So I'm in the camp that the sell-off that we're going to see in, let's say, latter part of June into July, um, I think that's going to be essentially a, everything gets tossed. It's a um, it's an all out, all the same market down. And if that's the case, it's a deflationary sell off, which means precious metals and oil and everything under the sun is going to get pushed downward. Uh, no, no stone gets left unturned. So if that happens, I think that supports the reason why gold can't get off the map because it's weak. And if you just look at a longer term chart here, um, let's look at the monthly. Let's jump right over to the monthly. You know, a couple more months of this sideways move and, and gold can move down and it can, it can, it can move down into this pivot high here at around a hundred dollars. Uh, I don't know if that'll happen, but we'll play it by ear, take it one day at a time. But that's on a monthly basis. So I'm not looking for an up move uh, for gold for quite some time. Uh, I think you're going to get the down move before you get the up move. Let's uh, move on over to the oil market. We'll take a look at the USO. And there's nothing here. You're still in no man's land. Uh, you still have the geopolitical fears. If you do get the deflationary sell-off, you're going to see a pullback in oil, hence a pullback in USO. So, you know, you're in the middle of this range here. Here's a range, 36 to 38, let's call it. And you're right smack in the middle or a little bit north of middle. So uh, there's no trade here. There's just nothing to do in the oil market. Any geopolitical event will shoot it up. And uh, any sell-off that has uh, the deflationary forces in it will take oil down. So there's really nothing to do there. We put out a trade alert yesterday on the FXI, and the FXI had a little down move today, but it's headed in the right direction. I like to start off on the right foot. So here was our trade yesterday. We had a down move today. It was a little lower early in the day, made a comeback later. Let's take a look at the intraday chart of the FXI, and you'll see that we had a nice down move, and then we floated up the rest of the day. So we'll see what happens. We'll play that one one day at a time also. And... Um, We'll go from there. So tomorrow, options X, and uh, we'll see what happens in the market one day, one chart at a time. Um, we'll see you guys on the next video. Have a great evening.